and we are live. So I want to talk about a really cool experience I had a couple of years ago. How's everybody this evening? I want to talk about a really cool experience I had a couple of years ago. I've always wanted to travel and I was recording voiceovers at the time from my house. And basically what it was was a, a group of people, like 50 people from around the world who were gonna travel from country to country. But the thing is you have to have a remote job. You have to have a, a job that you could do remotely. <clears throat> so I'm about to dive into that story. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chris. My name's Chris, I record voiceovers from home. I've been doing it since 2010. I've had a lot of really great experiences and I wanna share those experiences with you guys tonight. And I wanna give you tips and tricks and answer any questions on how you can do the same. I know there's a lot of people that ask me how they can get started in voiceovers. So that's what I wanna do. Let me know if you can hear me clearly. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm just gonna dive right into the story. So I was recording voiceovers out of my apartment and I had a, uh, I also had a regular job, a regular nine to five job, which I hated. I was selling cell phones at the time in a small shack and I saw an ad online for people that wanted to travel together. And so it was a group thing. It was like 50 people from around the world. We were gonna meet up in Europe in Croatia and every month we would go to a new country so I was excited I thought this is amazing I got to do this I can do this because I do voiceovers and the cool thing about voiceovers is, is as long as you have a Wi-Fi connection your laptop and your mic you can do it anywhere anywhere in the world basically so I told my parents I said I want to travel the world like this is exciting I I'm doing the voiceover thing and I can sell all my stuff and my parents um, they were a little nervous about it because um, they're not as traveled as I am now. Um, they're kind of a little more traditional and there's nothing wrong with that if that's more your style where they just kind of want to get married, have kids and settle down, live in the same city. But me, I wanted to get to know the world. I wanted to travel. So I told my parents that I was going to sell everything I had in my apartment and I was going to leave for a year, six months in Europe and six months in South America. So I did just that and I hesitated. I was really nervous about it. I actually came up with excuses in my head and I thought, you know, maybe I shouldn't do this because all my friends are here, my family, I have all these things, my apartment, my work, like my regular job. And so I just had all these excuses of why I shouldn't do it. But ultimately, like deep down in my heart, in my body, I knew that what I really wanted to do was travel and do voiceovers. That is what I really, really wanted to do. And so I committed to it and I did it. And I literally, I put everything in my house on Craigslist. I put it on OfferUp and I just sold it. I had people coming into my apartment, sell, sell, sell. And then I took off on a plane to Europe in Croatia where I met with 50 other people from different countries and literally all i had was my mic and my laptop or so that's what i was hoping for i did have some issues as soon as i got there i uh the airport actually had lost my luggage mid-flight and i needed that mic and laptop because that's that's my job and not only that i had customers waiting on me so i was a little freaked out kind of a little side point there but uh, thankfully I was still able to communicate on my cell phone and say hey guys your voiceover is coming up I'm just having a little bit of trouble here with my stuff um, and I think that's a very important thing if you keep your customers in the loop they're gonna be a lot more understanding so it took my luggage about five days to arrive in Europe they had lost it but um, and I had, had, I had the same clothes too. All my clothes were in there, my mic, uh, everything I had. <laughs> so 
One thing I learned is don't keep your important stuff in your check-on bag. Keep it in your carry-on bag or your backpack, whatever. I mean, that might be obvious to a lot of people now, uh, but back then when I was just starting to travel, it wasn't obvious to me. And I trusted the airport to keep my stuff together, but things happened, it got lost. And I did have to cancel maybe like one or two jobs because it was just taking too long. But it's better to cancel a job than have a customer waiting forever and you know give them a negative experience or a, have a negative review because of that. So anyway, that's how I got to travel. I was doing voiceovers and once I got my mic, I set up in my Airbnb. I actually used blankets and pillows and I even used my mattress to make it sound treated so that there weren't reflections and echoes. And it was the best thing ever. It was, it was incredible. I looked at my balcony and I could see the, the sea. I forget which sea is in front of the it, Croatia, but basically there's a whole sea in front of Croatia and I could see it. And uh, it was amazing. And so I would just record voiceovers from my Airbnb every single day right there. And then when I was done, I would go out and explore. And the thing about this program was I was traveling from country to country for a full year, but every month we were in a new country. And so that's what we were doing. Let me go ahead and answer some questions. I see you guys are coming in here. Yesterday we had an amazing live. I was actually not expecting so many people and so many questions, so that was really exciting and amazing that I was able to answer so many questions. So awesome. That's terrific. What an experience. It definitely was. Good for you. Yeah, it was amazing. Wow. What is voiceover? Voiceover is any sort of it's it's any sort of project that needs a voice and it's something that you record in front of a microphone usually in a booth so when you're at the movies and you see a movie trailer and you hear a voice that's a voiceover someone recorded that in front of a microphone in a in a booth somewhere so it could be as simple as your mobile app that says you know um a, a mobile mobile app game or an audiobook anything that uses a voice a commercial a radio ad anywhere where you see the voice, where you hear the voice, is a voiceover. And the thing about voiceover is, it's um, it's all through the like they they're not seeing you, so it's all audio. Oh no, yeah, it was horrible losing my stuff. Um, so definitely make sure to put your important things in your check-in bag. Well, not your check-in bag, your carry-on, not your check-in. I'm getting my Blue Yeti Pro mic tomorrow. Awesome. Very cool. That's the same mic I use. That's the one I recommend. It's solid. I stand by it. Amazing, amazing mic. Amazing quality. Amazing build. It even has a stand. You unfold it and it stands up by itself so you don't have to buy an extra stand. And it plugs right into your computer. Super convenient. And no, they're not sponsoring me. I'm not sponsored by Blue Yeti. It's just actually the mic I've been using for years. What's the best mic? <clears throat> so I use the Blue Yeti Pro. Uh, Blue is the company that makes a ton of great microphones. Go onto their website, just look up Blue Mic, and uh, you'll see a whole range of products that they offer. But the Yeti or the Yeti Pro is the one I recommend because it's beginner friendly and it's really great quality. It's literally plug and play. And I'm, I love getting new gear. Enjoy. What is a voiceover? So again, let's see, uh, uh, put simply, a voiceover is when talent records a script in front of a microphone and the company uses that voice in some sort of application, whether that be an audiobook, whether that be a mobile game, it could be a commercial, a radio ad, um, a movie trailer. That's what a voiceover is. It's basically when your voice is recorded for any sort of application. And looks like I'm getting a lot of questions now. And I love the questions, guys. Thank you for asking. Let's go back up. So glad you popped up on my For You page. That's really good to hear. I'm really happy to hear that. Congratulations. Thank you. 
how much to get started ballpark equipment. So the when I started out, I literally didn't have any gear. I just used my laptop mic, but I don't recommend that. So after that, I used um, a $50 mic. So it doesn't have to be super expensive. And then I used blankets and pillows. But later on, I upgraded to sound panels, uh, acoustic panels. If you're starting out, a simple USB mic. I recommend something around 100 bucks, but it doesn't have to be that expensive. You can start somewhere around 50 bucks like I did just to practice, get the ball rolling. And the thing is too, the mics nowadays are really good quality. They're, they've come a long way. I started this in 2010 where the technology was still getting better. It was still kind of new. Now it's 2023 and it's companies have had a lot of time to improve these products and make them more affordable. So a $50 mic now is a lot better than a $50 mic when I started in 2010. So I still think, you know, if you really want to do this for the long haul, try to get something nice, you know, something anywhere close to hundred bucks at least. Um, of course, there are the really nice ones, the really pro ones, which can cost up to a thousand dollars, but you don't have to invest that much. Where can we hear your work? If you go onto YouTube, type in voiceover freedom, you can see a whole playlist of work that I do, including some cartoon impressions, which I think you guys are really gonna love. There's SpongeBob on there, Ren and Stimpy. There's a whole bunch of fun voices. I even have an arcade machine project I did on there. Uh, a lot of cool behind the scenes stuff. And I do post some of it on this TikTok as well. So if you check out my TikTok account and just scroll down, you'll see some of the projects I've done. And I'll keep posting more. Just uh, stay tuned. How much was equipment? Did you have to invest in lessons first? So again, equipment is not expensive. Just use the laptop you already have. If you don't have a laptop, try to save up for one because you will need one. And for the sound booth, use things around your house when you're starting out. Um, some people just use their closet, like home closet. They put up clothes and that's, that's fine. You know, as long as you have enough clothes, as long as it's um, not echoey and it's quiet, you can make it work. Like I said, when I went traveling, I didn't have like a fancy big studio. I had literally my Airbnb and my creativity. I used pillows, I used blankets, and I was listening very closely because I wanted to make sure that it was dead silent and that it sounded great. It's my first mic, I'm going to do this voiceover thing. I've always wanted to, awesome, really happy to hear that. I have a radio voice, people say, I used to call friends and tell them they want a pizza party. That's really funny. A radio voice is really good. They're really high in demand. Um, they're just something about them that's just, I don't know, it's, it's very professional. It's very, uh, if you have a radio voice, you should definitely get on this. And even if you don't, I don't have a radio voice at all, but I can kind of emulate one. So you're listening to 99.9 .9, The Buzz. Stay tuned for more music. You're listening to 106.5, The Wolf. So it's kind of a, I've gotten some of those kind of voices before. I'm getting a lot of questions, which I appreciate. I'm gonna try going a little faster today because yesterday I couldn't keep up with the questions. That's it. That's really living life, man. It's so awesome. Definitely was amazing, an amazing experience. A lot of angry people at me. How did you begin doing voiceovers? So the story starts in 2010. I was going to college, I was working, and I just opened up my laptop one day and I found Fiverr when it was super new. It's a website for any sort of freelance work. And I thought, well, this is cool. Why don't I offer artwork? Because I like to draw. And I started drawing and I offered my art and I actually started getting some people interested. So I thought, what else can I do? What else can I offer? And I don't know what it is. Maybe I just love doing like acting and drama and theater, but I decided to offer voiceovers. And before you know it, I got more customers and that's how I started. It just grew and grew from there. So I made an account and I started learning the ins and outs and basically what I needed to do to make it sound good and clear and eventually investing in more gear and better stuff. 
And that's how I did it. Do you recommend getting gigs freelance or through an agent? Definitely freelance in my opinion. I've always done freelance and it's really been amazing for me. Um, I don't really recommend an agent because from what I've heard from people who have one, they don't really bring very much work anyway and you're gonna have to find your own work regardless. So um, I don't really have any interest in finding an agent um, because I would rather be in control of the, the customers directly, cut, talking to them, building relationships with the customers. It's worked for me so far and that's how I like it. So that is my personal recommendation. The only equipment you utilized was a Yeti microphone. That's correct. Yep, when I was starting out, I didn't have anything. I just used my laptop. And then I bought a $50 USB mic, and then I bought the Yeti. And then I upgraded to the Yeti Pro, and I got sound panels. And then, basically once I had the sound panels, I learned about how, how to make audio sound good, how to make a good booth. So that's when I was able to kind of experiment. I thought, you know what, how can I, how can I make my audio sound good when I'm not at home, when I have the sound panels and everything? How can I make it sound good in an Airbnb or, or a hotel or something? So I just started to experiment and I learned that if you place the blankets and the pillows in the right places and build it the right way, you can actually get really good sounding audio. Do you have an unusual or sought after voice? See, the funny thing is, People think that you have to have this really special godly voice that has to be perfect, um, but you don't. It helps if you do, but you don't because I sound like a normal person. I talk like a normal, a normal person. Um, I make mistakes when I speak like a normal person. Um, and I'm still able to do this because there's a demand for all kinds of voices. Companies don't always want that crystal clear, golden, godly voice. They don't always want that. Sometimes they want a normal voice like you or me. They want our voices. And those voices are able to relate and connect to people easier. So you'd be surprised. You would be surprised. Did you receive my email? I did, I emailed you back. I emailed you back, so check your email, make sure you got my reply. And thank you for reaching out. When you mean voiceovers, does that mean recording for audiobooks? That is one example, yes. So anything that uses the voice in a audio medium uh, would be a voiceover. So audiobooks, commercials, anywhere where you hear just the voice. So if you're driving your car and you hear a radio from McDonald's that says, come on, come on down for our new two for one special, Big Macs, you know, ba da ba ba ba, I'm loving it. That kind of, that's, that's a voiceover. Always wanted to do this, a dream. It's definitely a dream. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me, best thing I've ever done. Um, because there's so many reasons, you know, you can do this from home or anywhere you, you know, in the world. It's allowed me to travel. And I've been doing it while I travel. And you don't have to have a long commute. It's super fun, work with your own customers. It's, it's amazing. And another thing too is, you don't have to get all dolled up and you don't have to get all, you know, dressed up in a uniform because you're not gonna be on video, you're not gonna be on camera. You're in your home, you could be in your pajamas in front of a mic, so nobody's gonna see you, which is super liberating in a way because you can just kind of be yourself. You can, you can, I don't know, it's nice. It's nice to not have that pressure can you give us an example of your voice work? So one example which I love sharing is an arcade machine that I did. And I was the guy that said, game over, insert coin to play again. Press start to play. Good job. Level two, power up. So that's my voice. And to me, it's amazing because I love video games. And you know, I have friends who go to Dave and Buster's and it's just cool knowing that my friends are playing arcade machines that have my voice in them. Like, that's just a cool feeling. And just knowing that people find your stuff online, like on YouTube or TikTok, and they'll say, hey, I, I heard your voice. That's a really cool thing. So, 
And can you recommend a website or book to learn the basics? Um, yes, so there is um, if you go onto YouTube, check out my channel. I do have a lot of good stuff. Voiceover Freedom. Another guy who I like uh, is Bill DeWeese. Um, I've been seeing him for a long time. Uh, he's he's an industry pro who is also on Fiverr, uh, so he's a good guy. Um, but there's just so much there's so much good information. Um, there's another website I forget the name of it. How to become a voice artist, I believe. Um, they have some good information on there too. So those are a couple resources. And of course, you can send me a DM as well, or send me an email, and I can answer questions. Every, every person has had a different experience, which is cool because you get to hear their side of the you know, industry and their experience. Every person has something they can contribute, which is why it's nice to kind of hear different perspectives from different people. Okay. Let me see, I've got a lot of questions here. Do you have to be able to do voice acting? Can you get work by just having a soothing voice? Voice acting is voice acting is acting, so you definitely do need to be able to have some sort of understanding of how to use your voice and how to read scripts. But a soothing voice is a very excellent quality, and there's a lot of people who want a soothing voice. There's a lot of applications. For example, one off the top of my head is meditation apps or meditation channels or anything having to do with uh, meditation, they're gonna want a soothing voice. Or even audiobooks. There's some people who want a soothing voice for audiobooks because they're listening to you for a long time. But you do need to have some experience, an understanding of how to make it engaging. You can't just read, it's, it's not just reading. So there is some acting. And some scripts require more acting than others. So that's an important thing to mind, to keep in mind. In YouTube, will you explain how to do demo? Uh, so I go more in depth into the demos and some of the courses, educational courses I have on voiceoverfreedom.com. But I do have some videos on YouTube as well that kind of go over the basics. I talk about the basics of voiceover demos. So check that out. I'm on YouTube, Voiceover Freedom. <laughs> that is pretty cool. That's Bubble Bass's voice. This may be a little off topic, but what kind of mic would you recommend for ASMR eating videos? Condenser microphones. So if you're doing any sort of ASMR, you're gonna need a condenser microphone. Matter of fact, for any sort of voiceover, you need a condenser microphone because those are more sensitive and they're able to pick up higher quality than a dynamic microphone, for example. So condenser is what you are definitely going to need. Do audiobooks pay well? It depends on the book. Some do pay well, some actually even pay royalties, uh, which means that after the book launches and sells, depending on how well it sells, you get a percentage of that. So um, I personally, they're not my favorite. Audiobooks aren't my favorite because they're really long projects, but um, there is a big demand for them. So it's, I do recommend the audiobook category, especially if you like to read and if you think you can pace yourself for long periods of time, do it. That's, it's a very good place. And the jobs are a little easier to find um, with audiobooks. Did you get lots of rejections at first? Um, it's not that I was getting rejected, it's that I wasn't, I wasn't getting booked at first. Because the way that Fiverr works is you, you make a demo and you make a profile and people come to you. And if they reach out, then you send them a quote. If they don't reach out, then they go with someone else. So for me, when I, I was starting out, I didn't really get too much attention. So I had to actually message people myself and go after people myself and kind of have to uh, give a really, really exceptional offer and a low price just to get those first reviews and build that trust. 
and then I would get repeat business from those people. So, do people find you from a sample? So they usually find me through Fiverr. Uh, that's one of my main places I get work. Um, I have my profile up there, my video, my demo reels are on there. And Fiverr is a huge company now. It, they spend millions of dollars on advertising, so they have all this traffic and people are clicking through, they find my profile and they listen to my voice and then they just send me a message and I send them a quote for the project. And pretty simple. And I love it that way. I don't have to be auditioning because some sites and the old way of doing things is you did have to audition. And I don't like doing that. <laughs> some websites you do have to audition on, um, like Upwork, but I don't know. For me, it's, it's not my thing. But at the beginning, um, if you're starting out, it may not be a bad thing because you get practice, you get experience. So just depends. Well, what if I don't know if my voice sounds good? Um, that's, that's the thing, it's, it's, I don't think you can be really too critical of yourself in that way because you may not think you sound good, but there could be plenty of brands and companies who hear your voice and they love it because I personally don't think I sound that extraordinary. I just sound like a normal guy, but I've been doing this for 13 years and you know, I get orders almost every day and people love my voice and they keep coming back. So it just goes to show that you don't have to love your own voice. You don't have to love it. You know, it, the important thing is that other people love it. Other people will let you know. Other people. It's not, it's not what we think, basically. So don't, don't let that stop you. Um, where do I start? Uh, check out the link in my bio or go on to YouTube, um, type in voiceover freedom or voiceoverfreedom.com is probably the best place to start um, or shoot me a DM, any of those places and you'll be sure to get some good information and help from myself as well. Okay, let's keep going. Do you still use same freelance to get jobs? I still do. Uh, I've branched out a lot. So in the beginning it was exclusively Fiverr, but then I used other websites because there's so many. So I've used um, Voice Bunny, Upwork, I've used, um, I've done direct, which is the best way for me, is when clients email you directly, so you're not paying a, a cut to any third party website, you're actually just working with the customer directly or the business directly. That is the best way, but the great thing about the third party websites is that they bring the traffic. Literally, you could, you know, you could wake up and you've got new customers there. I love that, so can't beat it. All right, let's see. See, how do I get into voiceovers? You're already getting into it. Just by watching this TikTok live, you're getting the information, you're getting the juice, you're getting the sauce. Um, also, check me out on YouTube, Voiceover Freedom, and there's lots of videos with topics that would probably interest you. I used to do voiceovers back in the Caribbean, have not done it since I've moved to the US. You should do it, especially if you have a cool Caribbean accent. Um, I think that's pretty cool. That's niche. So anytime you have an accent or you can speak a different language That's a whole new market that you can appeal to and people need voiceovers all over the world Not just the United States. So and people need voiceovers in their language. So keep that in mind and I hope that will encourage you to um, to, to start up again The Yeti Pro is about 230 to 250 dollars Where do I apply for this? So you you don't necessarily apply. It's freelancing, which means you're gonna make your own demo reel, you're gonna get your own gear, you're gonna find your own customers. And that's really a blessing and it's freedom because you get to be your own boss. You don't have to depend on somebody finding you work or gonna if someone's gonna fire you or anything like that, if you're gonna get hired. It's literally, you create your stuff, you make the, your own success. And that has been the best thing. And it's what I recommend a thousand times over when you're completely in control of your own business, your own clients, your own prices, it's the best thing. Um, Observer Radio, how do I find work like this? So uh, Fiverr, Upwork, 
ACX, people per hour. Um, those are some of the websites. But again, it's not just as simple as just making a profile. You have to dedicate time to the art, just like dancing, cooking, painting. Nobody's good on the first day. You gotta dedicate to it. I'm not saying it's hard, but um, it definitely does take some dedication. Day by day, you'll get better. Um, but you're already doing the first step by being here and taking in the information. So that's already a good start. How do you get jobs? So that's basically what you do. You go to those websites, but beforehand, the first thing is you gotta practice your own voice. You have to read scripts out loud, practice reading in front of people, um, get a microphone and start recording and start listening to yourself, get feedback from your family and keep practicing, keep showing up to these lives. Check out the content that I have on YouTube, Voice Over Freedom, and little by little, you'll start to learn how to piece together your own demo reel and you'll be able to uh, sign up on these websites with a lot more confidence and a lot more skill so that when a brand finds you, they will hear your voice and you'll get booked. And then you'll get reviews and you'll keep growing and then you'll be in business like a snowball. So, how do you start? I've been told I have the best voice for voiceover work and never got into it. So yeah, and especially if you're getting told that you have a great voice, that's validation already. Because these companies and brands are people. And if people are already saying you, ha you sound nice, then that's a really good sign. Not that you need to sound nice, but it de definitely helps. And it's a good sign if people are saying you sound good. They still use my intros and outros. That's awesome. It's a cool feeling, isn't it? This may be a little off topic. Okay, I answered that question. Thank you for the questions, guys. Keep them coming. I'll definitely do my best to get to all of them. Retweet. Rady, okay. I know you can download their app on the Play Store. What differentiates someone who will make it doing what you do and someone who won't? Oh, this is a really excellent question. So I think the biggest differentiator is dedication. It's not the voice. It's not um, basically their gear or anything like It's dedication, really simply. Um, there's a lot of people who say they're going to do it but they don't invest in themselves and they give up and they don't make it. But the people that dedicate, that decide, that, that decide they wanna do this and they stick with it, those are the ones that make it. And they don't even have to have the best voices. It's not about that. If someone's got the voice of, of uh, Morgan Freeman, this golden voice, but they never get started, they never really, they don't see results right away so they give up they're not gonna make it. And if someone like you or me comes with a normal voice and they say, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna learn the ins and outs, I'm gonna practice, I'm gonna get my mic, and I'm gonna learn how to make a, a reel, and I'm gonna learn how to, how to really make this a reality, they're gonna make it. I'm proof of that, I'm proof of that. I, I, I had no industry knowledge, I had no connects, I'm not a celebrity, I literally, I decided I wanted to do it and I dedicated myself to it. And it's not hard. It's just a matter of showing up time and time again. It's a matter of deciding. It's a matter of spending a little bit of money up front. Yeah, it's true. But it's worth it because it can change your life and you're going to learn so many skills along the way. So dedication. That's the biggest different differentiator between someone who makes it and not. Dedication. The most dedicated person will win. AI problem. AI is a problem, right? This is really funny that you bring this up. I love AI. I'm super amazed by the things it can do. And there is artificial intelligence voices which are sounding really good and convincing. But here's the thing, and especially me being in the voiceover world, I've experimented a lot with AI. I even have a TikTok where I cloned my own voice and it sounds phenomenal, but I'm not worried at all because the thing is, even though AI sounds great, it's not a human. 
they don't know what er, what words to emphasize. They don't know what speed. They don't understand the script. They don't. It's a computer, and they can't talk to a customer like we're talking right now because it's literally just programming. So that's the beautiful thing is, um, and not just that. The art, the um, AI voices, they have some artifacts. The audio isn't really that clean and clear. There's some glitching in there if you listen, and if you listen closely, it's just not. It's not it. And customers will be able to tell. So I'm not worried about AI at all. Um, if it does get there, it's gonna be a while because human voices, human emotion and human understanding is really hard to replicate. Now think about how I just said that. I slowed down, I emphasized each word. I said really hard to replicate. And AI wouldn't have known to say it like that and express themselves, like the little cadences, all these little things in your voice. Um, and AI can't do that yet. But I love talking about AI and I think it's really cool that, uh, that we uh, are learning more about that. Uh, is this the same thing as recording your voice for books? Yes. Voiceovers is any sort of application that uses your voice in an audio format, whether that be an audiobook, um, whether your voice is in a movie trailer, in a commercial, um, uh, a mobile game, an arcade machine, um, your doctor's voicemail, um, the announcement at the supermarket. Um, thanks for shopping at Grocery Outlet. Grocery Outlet, Bargain Market. Like that's all a voiceover because you're not seeing the person, but you're hearing them. And it was a voice that was recorded in a, in a booth. So that's voiceover. So yes, anything that has to do with um, your voice. Selling a course, I do have some courses. Um, I have a beginner friendly one. It's only 27 bucks. Go to voiceoverfreedom.com or click the link in my bio, check that out. Um, I talk about how to learn, how to start recording, how to discover your own style, how to, I even include practice scripts in there. So it's a really good like starter kit that literally I, I found all these, all this, did basically the, the hard work to get, got the information and gives you the um, gives you the head start. Also the mic, talk about the mic, the booth, how to set all that up. So check that out. It's very affordable. And of course, shoot me a DM if you have any questions because I am here to help. Oh wow, I would love to do this. You definitely should look into doing this. It's an amazing thing that, you know, there's a demand for male voices, female voices, old, young, literally like, Look at the TV, like how many voices do you hear? You don't just hear, you know, Morgan Freeman all day. Sometimes you hear a woman's voice if it's like uh, any sort of um, products that are uh, catered to like a female demographic or a male voice if it's like a more male demographic. So there is a need for all kinds of voices. Is the Yeti a condenser microphone? It is. The Yeti is a condenser microphone that records in a cardioid pattern, which is exactly what you need. My YouTube channel is Voice Over Freedom. Voice Over Freedom, just like my TikTok name. Which sites do you use? Fiverr, um, Upwork, ACX, People Per Hour. Those are good ones. And I used Voice Bunny a long time ago, but someone recently said they're not taking anyone else on anymore. Um, but yeah, all these websites are great. Um, doing voiceovers. Again, as the title says, has allowed me to record from anywhere with Wi-Fi. Is Fiverr an app? They do have an app. They're also um, online. I'm afraid AI will take over. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Um, it may. I could see it replacing maybe some really, really like static jobs, like voiceovers, like where you don't need very much. Um, human connection maybe um like maybe like an alexa kind of thing like hi my name is alexa press your thumb against the keypad to open the door something like that where you don't need to actually emote and such like a really robotic is, is that does that make sense maybe something like that but um honestly like for commercials and things where people want to hear voices it's not it's not gonna change 
Fiverr is a freelance company for all professionals. Yes, exactly. So they're not just a voiceover only website. There's all sorts of, it's a freelancing website. So you can offer any sort of freelance services. Like I said, when I started, I started with art because all my life I was drawing and painting and, and I was, I was making art and so I sold art. And then eventually I got the idea to record voiceovers and that changed my life. That From that point on, it was the best thing ever. I still do it to this day. And I learned, I learned how to make um, offers and pr do the right pricing and talk to customers. Thanks, I've heard about it before but wasn't sure if we should get on their app or website. That's awesome. Just subscribed, that's cool to hear. Do you have a, I'm getting some really good questions here. Do you have a list of sites to go on? Yes, I do, I do. I actually made a PDF guide um, that has all the websites and which ones to avoid and, the, and I have the pricing structure. I should put that up again. It's on my website, but uh, um, I should make it easier to find because I get a lot of people asking about the websites. Do you ever sing? I do, I do like to sing. I wouldn't consider myself a singer, but I do like to sing. Um, I do make music. That's how I actually started getting into audio production and like kind of learning how to record is because I, I make music. Um, there's a song I just made, I just wrote, and uh, I'll sing you a verse. How does it go? Um, I don't know why you keep on sweating me and I don't know, but I feel like sweating you. I don't know why, so don't tell me why. I'ma keep you hypnotized. This is my alibi. So that's kind of my, my singing voice. Again, I'm not a singer, but I like to sing. So what was your first proud paycheck when you started? Honestly, it wasn't even that much when I was starting out. I was just, the point where I said, I'm making, I'm getting gas money, I'm getting grocery money. That when it, That's when I knew it was like, they had potential because I was already working um, a nine to five regular job. I was going to school and so this was just, I was just doing it for fun. I wasn't doing it for the money. I like acting, I like being in front of the, the, the mic. I like being creative. So basically when I, basically anytime I got paid for doing something I loved, I was in disbelief because I'm thinking, I, I love doing voice acting. I would do it for free. Like, it's like photography too. Like I love photography. I, I don't, you don't, you're gonna pay me to do something I love? So that's how I felt. Um, but really great question. There's, well, there wasn't any specific paycheck. It was just any time, every time I get paid, I feel, even to this day, I feel like really fulfilled. And not just that, customers leave you a review, uh, um, a five-star review like, wow, Chris's voice was so great and detailed. He's really easy to work with. He brought my character to life. Like just imagine hearing compliments every day after your voiceover. Like no other job that I can think of um, is that rewarding because your boss definitely doesn't, you know, uh, in a normal job, they definitely don't don't tell you, like give you compliments every single day, right? Um, at least my boss didn't, but customers do because they leave you reviews and oh, it's, it's the best. I just got laid off of retail yeah it's 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 not it's not fun right i used to work retail and uh, my store was actually closing down it was going out of business it's a rate i used to work at radio shack so i know the feeling um i didn't really like working there too much it was it was re it's retail and it's just oh, it's it's horrible you know but i did learn a lot of um sales and helping customers and I, I did learn a lot of skills and I'm thankful for that job but I, I know what it's like to work a job that you hate job that you don't know you don't want to be in so can anyone do this again like I said there's a demand for male voices female voices if you're dedicated enough you can do this and I'm a perfect example of it I got a normal voice 
I learned how to, if, if you think my voice is okay now, 13 years ago, I didn't talk like this. I was, I was, um, I didn't enunciate as well. I stuttered a little more. Like, see, I just stuttered, stuttered, stuttered. I, st I did that more often. I, I had more imperfections. But over time and after, re after reading so many scripts, you get better and you learn to enunciate better and which words sound better and, and, and how to pronounce your words better. So this is actually the result of me um, doing voiceovers and learning how to speak for 13 years. <clears throat> so if you sound great, like if you're able to enunciate already, you're already ahead of the game because I, I didn't talk like this. Um, AI is still choppy, definitely is. We're making a film. Oh, that's awesome. What's the film about? Glad I came over to your site to learn and help my son, which he wants to do voices. Yes, definitely. That's so exciting. And there's no right, right or wrong age. I started when I was 20, I want to say. 2010 was, yeah, 20. So there's kids doing it. There's teenagers doing it. You know, old older people doing it. They need, like, different demographics need different voices. They connect, like, if there's, um, I'm just going to give a random example. M makeup products. The biggest demographic is, is women. So they're going to want a female voice to, if they want to sell a certain makeup brand, to, you know, connect with the, that demographic. Or if there's, like, a, let's just say a retirement center. Maybe they want a, a, the voice of an older gentleman to connect with that demographic. Um, one example with me is uh, I had a college reach out to me. They were doing a, a sale on college buyback books. So they wanted like a college sounding, a college kid sounding voice. And they're like, you're, you sound young, and, like you're in college, so we want your voice. And I, I was the guy that said, um, the co uh, college is having a 52% buyback on your college textbooks. So definitely check it out on campus. We're located right on the second floor, right behind the cafeteria. And see how I, I sound like a college kid? So I'm able to relate to those people, but I can't relate to people in like the makeup, like a, like a makeup space, like beauty space, the way that a woman artist can and vice versa. Or like the, basically what I'm saying is that there's different de demographics. So your voice, your, your voice can appeal to a whole entire demographic that I can't. And that's, that's what I tell people when, um, Sometimes people say, well, aren't you, why are you giving out all this information and all this knowledge? Like, aren't you afraid of creating competition? And I'm not because there's plenty of work to go around. The pie is huge and I can't eat all that pie by myself. So why not share it with you guys so you guys can eat some of that pie with me? And I'm passionate about this stuff. I'm passionate about voiceover and sharing my experience and being in this community with you guys. Love to hear the different voices you do. White Courtesy Telephone, I got your course. Awesome, congratulations. You'll definitely enjoy it. If you have questions, shoot me a DM. Um, about the course, one time, 27 payment, or is it recurring? It's a one time, lifetime access. Super affordable, definitely invest in yourself. It's on voiceoverfreedom.com. Like I said, I go over the mic you need, the booth. Um, there's a tutorial step-by-step -step on how to record, and I'm teaching it myself in there in a video format, so. It's at your own pace. Check it out. Airlines and airports use voiceovers. Public transport buses. Yes, that's true. Exactly. So I was at the airport inside of one of those trains that transport you from station to station. And uh, I heard it. it. It was the voice that said, uh, now arriving at station B. Enjoy your stay or something like that. You know, something simple. But that's a voiceover. And yes, people record those those don't come out of thin air um i get i've gotten a couple of those where i'm the guy that says the show is about to begin please take your seats now and remember to empty your trash in the nearby receptacle thank you and i'll little i'll literally just say that and i'm like i get paid well just just to say that there's not there's not a whole lot of um heavy lifting or anything it's you just record it once and and uh, you're good to go. Do you need to know how to act? You don't need to know how to act like an actor does, but you do need to understand a script. So there is voice acting. So it's a little different from acting because with acting, it's more visual. With voice acting, 
it's more of、uh, understanding the script and understanding how to use your voice to deliver that script and bring it to life. So you, what I mean by that is you need to learn what words to emphasize. You need to learn how to kind of modulate your speed, your tone, kind of the volume of it too. Notice how right now I'm speaking a little quieter, which makes you kind of listen a little more intently. And then pauses, they keep you on the edge of your seat because you want to know what I'm about to say next. And see, all those little things are little tips and tricks that you learn, and you use those in the script. So that a company can sell more products. So, a normal person might just read it and say, "This is how I would read." You use pauses to get somebody to understand the product, so they can sell more products. But notice, it's the speed was there was no speed modulation. There was there was no life. There was no emphasis, and there was no there was no、uh, voice acting basically. So that's that's voice acting is you learning little tips and tricks. Like emphasis, pausing, pronunciation,、um, everything to bring it to life. Do you remember that famous movie trailer guy? He said things like "In a world." Yes, the movie trailer guy.、Uh, he was a legend.、Um, I think his name. What was his name? Somebody tell me. Remind me his name.、Uh, Don. His name was Don. I forget his last name, but he, he was.、Uh, Bald, bald gentleman,、uh, with a with a really powerful voice, the movie trailer guy voice, and he's he's one of the guys that inspires inspires me, because that was his living, that was his is a lot of people with his voice, and、uh, he's pretty famous in the voiceover community. Um, let me see. Thank you for the questions, guys. I'll do my best to get to them all. I have recorded a couple meditations. I've been told my voice is relaxing. Boom! Perfect. I love that. Yes, if you have a relaxing voice or a soothing voice or a calm voice or something that's e- a voice that's easy to listen to, you are perfect for meditation, audio books. Your voice is perfect for any sort of voice where people need to hear you for a long time. Perfect. And I have gotten some、uh, jobs where. Uh, they'll ask me to do like meditation voices, where I'll, I'll say, "Now breathe in, and hold your breath for five seconds. Feel feel your body relax. Feel your toes. Now focus on your kneecaps. Now focus on the little fat that hangs underneath your ears. Isn't it relaxing? Something like that. So, if you can do that, there's definitely a market for that." I tried to use AI for meditation recordings. It's not the same, exactly. Even though AI is impressive, it's still choppy. It's not there. It's not a human. It's not gonna be replacing real people anytime soon. I'm not worried about it at all. What was the first gig you did that you got that got you committed to stick with it?、Uh, voiceover gig. I think I was just I was just I was ready from the start. I went in committed. I didn't. Come in thinking, well, what if this works? I went in thinking, I'm gonna make this work, and that's what I want you guys to do. This again, the difference between someone who makes it and doesn't is dedication. The person that says, I'm gonna figure this out, I'm gonna make this work, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take in the information, I'm gonna come to the TikTok lives, I'm gonna ask questions, I'm gonna invest in myself, whether that be in in the A program, an educational program, or getting the mic, or just watching, watching the content. Make it happen. Thank you for sharing this. You're awesome for doing that. It's my pleasure, and I, that makes me really happy that to know that you guys are getting some value from this. What app do you recommend for voiceover edits? So there's free software that I use called Audacity,、um, totally free. If you're on a Mac, GarageBand, also free. Um, paid programs are a little better. Okay, they're a lot better. Like Adobe Audition,、um, FL Studio is another one I use. But if you're starting out, you don't need to have a paid app. You can start off with a free app. And all of the apps do the same same thing.、Um, they all have the same features. Well, not the same features, but they have the same 
basic features that you need to edit voiceovers. So don't think that you can't do something in one in Audacity that you can do in, a, in another app. Like the main things are there. The main things are all there. I'm not sure which chat he's responding to, but it's not here. Okay. Do you solely do voiceover work now or do you still have another job? Excellent question. My main thing, my main gig is voiceover work. That is the bulk of my income. That's how I make a living. That's how I travel the world. That's how I still travel. That's how I pay rent. That's how I pay my gas. That's how I do anything is voiceover work. It's, it's, it's everything for me. But that being said, I have ventured into other side hustles along the way. I myself am a very creative person. So because I uh, was doing voiceovers, it gave me so much freedom. That's why I called my channel voiceover freedom. It gave me freedom. It gave me time um, because uh, recording doesn't take too long and editing doesn't take too long, especially after you learn how to get it down right. So I took up freelance photography. I took up freelance videography. I Now I do this um, TikTok stuff and I do the educational stuff like I, ma I made a course to teach people who are really more serious about it and I did video consulting for voiceovers and I just did a bunch of other things and side projects which is, is is great news for you guys because you guys can do the same if there's something that you've wanted to do or another passion that you wanted to explore with voiceovers you can do that you can get that freedom you can get that time to explore other passions if you want to travel the world Voiceovers can let you do that. If you want to spend more time with family or take up a hobby, whatever, um, you can do that. Did you take any lessons or did courses, college? Definitely, I definitely did. Um, I did drama in high school and I took speech classes in college and I was always doing research. Um, back when I started in 2010, there wasn't as much information as there is now, but still, I would read books, I would, it was a lot of trial and error on my, on my own part. So all of that, basically getting the mic, recording for yourself, learning what sounds good, what doesn't. Are you doing all of this on Fiverr only? Uh, not all, a lot of it is on Fiverr, but I do have customers that work with me directly through email that I've gained over the years. They have my direct contact email and they send me work through there. And that's even better because you don't have to pay Fiverr or any other website a percentage, but I still work on Fiverr. Um, I've done other voiceover websites, um, uh, Voice Bunny, Upwork, those are good ones. People Per Hour is a good one. I haven't signed up on it, but it looks good. I have a New York accent, can't stand it. Everyone knows I'm from New York when I travel. Um, you should actually be proud of that because New York probably wants New York voiceovers. That's a demographic that you can you can connect to a New York audience better than I can because you have a authentic New York. In New York we talk like this. Hey, let me get a cup of water. My voice is getting a little dry. Where's my cup of water? Here we go. I got a cup of water. New York. Um, so if you have an accent, if you have a, um, speak in a different language, you can connect with a whole market that speaks in your accent or your language. Believe it or not, there are, I've gotten requests for like British accents, Latin accents, country accents, because people connect with these audience. There's people that want these voices and I, sometimes I can't do them all and I have to turn down the work and that work could go to you. And that's what I'm saying. The, the piece of the pie, the pie is big. There's a piece of the pie for everybody. Uh, why does it have to be a side hustle though? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a side hustle at all. Um, it was a side hustle for me. And I know that a lot of people have normal jobs right now. And so I say it's a great, it's one of the best side hustles because you can do this while you work. And I have proven that. I had a normal job. My sister does this now, Christina. She's on the podcast with me. And she still does this. And she works She works full-time. She works a full-time job and does this.
I'm bilingual. Is that good? Definitely. That's excellent. Um, like I said, if you speak multiple languages, that's a whole different region of the world that you can now record voiceovers for. I had a friend, I, I was actually learning Portuguese and I had a tutor and I told her that I do voiceovers for a living. She's like, really? That's cool. How can I get into that? And so I gave her some tips and tricks and kind of helped her out a little bit. And she is now doing voiceovers in Portuguese for Brazil from home. I was impressed because, you know, sometimes when, when I help people, I'm not sure, like, I, I'm not sure if they're going to be dedicated and, and follow through. But when they do, it, 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 I love to see it because I knew that they had that potential. But that's the thing, I can only help with giving the knowledge and encouragement. I can't actually like jump into your body and make you do it. So I hope that is inspiring. But yes, it does help to speak other languages. Thank you for being so great. Please share, I would love to do this. Awesome, awesome to hear that. What if you think, what if you think you sound terrible? That's okay, it's okay. A lot of people think they sound terrible. Sometimes I think I sound terrible. Um, it's really not up to us, it's up to the company, the person who's gonna be paying us. It's, their, it's what they think. Because there's some times where I think, man, I, I don't sound great today. I do the voice and they say it's perfect. So it's kind of like beauty's in the eye of the beholder. We might not think we're all that, but I bet you there's a company somewhere that's gonna say, your voice, that's the one. That's the one I want. So believe in yourself. Uh, is it free? I have free content on YouTube, Voice Over Freedom. So there is some free content there. And uh, what he did, what he just did is a voiceover, the voice to an ad, a documentary, yes. Now, now arriving at a terminal. Now arriving at terminal, now arriving at terminal B. Please watch your step. Thanks for riding with Amtrak. Have a nice day. Check us out on Amtrak.com. How do you start? Um, you start with, you are starting watching this content, taking in the information. You practice with your voice first. You have to take in the practice with your voice. You have to, like I said, it's an art. It's like dancing or cooking. You have to learn how to um, use your voice to bring a script to life. And I give a ton of tips on that on, on my YouTube. On my, the best place is uh, my website, voiceoverfreedom.com, where I have my course, only 27 bucks. I walk you through that. I walk you through the process. So if you can, check that out. Uh, you should take live calls from us and rate our voices. That's a good idea. That's really fun. <laughs> that is, that's really cool. That's a good idea. The only thing is I'm using my phone to do the TikTok, so I might have to get another phone. But if I do, I'm going to consider that. I think that's a wonderful idea. Do some call-ins. Should we do that, guys? Should we do some call-ins? That's an awesome idea. I've, I've always wanted to do that. I've seen that on like radio shows, but I never thought that I would be doing that. And then I will let you give you some tips on the air about your voice. Uh, let's see what's next. Have you done any cartoon or movies? I haven't done any super huge movies because those those are usually left to like DreamWorks, Pixar, those big studios. Although I don't I don't need to because there's so much work in like local jobs and um, I have done. That's not to say I haven't done big jobs. I just did a um, voice two characters for a game, a video game for the Nintendo Switch, and that game's coming out in June. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that most of the jobs that I do are like startup businesses, local ads, radio ads, sometimes it's nationwide stuff, but don't underestimate how much work is in your own city, like in your own state. There's so much work there. It doesn't, you don't have to have like this big, uh, this big contract with a super huge studio. You don't, you don't need that. I mean... You might get that every now and then, which is, it's awesome, it's awesome, it's cool. But um, there's a ton of work, like startups need commercials and they need voices for their commercials and, and apps, their mobile apps. 
Are you worried about AI? I'm not worried about AI. I'm not worried about it at all. People want real voices and AI, it sounds good, kind of, for, for basically one application, but AI voices are not versatile. Think about it. An AI can only do one kind of voice and it's kind of like in one tone, one speed, it doesn't emphasize any words. It just kind of just speaks, it just speaks. But what if you want it to sound exciting like this? Like, come on down, we're having a great sale. Come on down this Saturday where you can get two for one. We're telling you, this is the sale that you got to check out. AI can't do that. See how I did that? You got to check out. I made it choppy. AI doesn't know what that is. Or the movie theater guy voice where he says, in a world where one man travels the world recording voiceovers, with a USB mic and his laptop. One man is on a mission to change the world, sharing his secret tips and advice and sauce. This is the voiceover freedom guy. See, like AI doesn't know how to create those pauses and understand, AI doesn't know what it's saying, basically, like a human does. So I'm not worried about AI at all. Uh, Don Fon Don LaFontaine, movie trailer guy. That's the guy. Don LaFontaine. He's the movie trailer voice. We've all heard him. Um, he used to do the voiceover trailers back in the 90s, late 90s. An inspiration. Um, I think his story is a very amazing one. Please tell me what free app you recommend. Um, so I use Fiverr. Uh, there's also uh, Upwork, Voice Bunny, People Per Hour, ACX. Those are some good websites to check out for gigs. But again, it's not just making an account. You got to understand the art. You got to put time into this craft. It's like cooking. It's like dancing. Nobody's good on the first day. It's fun, but you got to be dedicated. And little by little, you'll uh, master the art. How long, when you first started, did you land your first gig? Uh, for me, it probably took about like two weeks, two to three weeks. It wasn't too long. Um, but I was reaching out to people, I was sending messages, I was sending out my demo reels, I was improving my demo reels, so I was busy in the meantime. Do you have a manager to help you out or do you do it all? Never needed a manager, never needed an agent, never needed to rely on anybody. I've always learned to do this all on my own and I'm glad I did because I have my own customers, I have my own business, basically my own schedule, my own pricing, it's the best thing ever. So, never needed one. I have talked to voiceover artists who have worked with agents and everybody's experience is different, but what I've heard is that they don't really bring in very much work at all um, to the point where it's not even worth it. So, I mean, I can't, I can't recommend it. I think I can, what I recommend is learn how to do this on your own and freelance just like me because then you can travel the world you can you can run your own business how you want set your own pricing work with who you want and who you don't want and that is very liberating and that's how I like it what exactly is voiceover to put simply voiceover is any sort of is, is your voice let me explain it simply it's when a voice talent that could be you or me, records a script in front of a mic in a booth, and that audio is put in some sort of media, which can be an audiobook, it can be a movie trailer, a radio ad, a commercial ad, a video game, any anywhere you hear a voice, it could be your doctor's voicemail, it could be the train, in the airport, the little metro train at the airport, anywhere you hear a voice, that is voiceover. At your supermarket, hey everybody, we're having a special on bananas. Now you can get five bananas for five cents each. Grocery outlet, bargain market. That's a voiceover. How much per hour do you make? Great question. So how I work is I freelance. So I set my own prices and that means each project is different. And every day I get different amounts of customers, different size projects. But normally I charge per words. 
So there will be some days that I make really, really good money where it could be like a thousand dollars in one day or more. There could be days where it's maybe just a hundred bucks or maybe just 50 bucks in the day. But it does depend on the day, it does depend on the project. Um, at the end of the month though, it's always been, for me, ever since I started, once I grew it up to the point where it's been full-time income, I've been, I've been great ever since and I've never had to stress or worry about not making it. So um, that's another great thing too. You just have to learn how to get repeat business because it's a lot of people think, well, what if I don't get new customers? You don't always need new customers. Um, a lot of times, if you can just get a couple repeat people, think about it. If you get like five people who spend, you know, $200 each on you each month, that's already $1,000. And that's just the repeat people. So repeat business is pretty important. Love New York or New Jersey accent? New York! I have a New York accent and you sound like, you sound like it too. Cough, coffee. Hey, I'm drinking some water here. Watch where you're going. It's coffee. I appreciate the questions, guys. Keep them coming. You touch on some excellent points. Appreciate that. Hello. Can you tell me where to find these opportunities? Uh, so you'll want to, first, you got to work on your voice. You'll need to make a demo reel eventually, and then you can find these on Fiverr, Upwork, People Per Hour, ACX, Voice Bunny, and there's a whole there's a whole lot more. Um, but those are the some of the main ones that I have checked out personally, and I, I can say they are good good sites. Happy Sunday, happy Sunday. Uh, okay, it's Monday here. I thought it was, is this, wait, I'm confused, it's, I thought it was Monday today. Why are you guys saying happy Sunday? I worked in radio for a while, surprisingly. It's not a skill that has been helpful. Okay. Well, I mean, the thing is, if you have the skill, that's one thing. But you got to know how to market yourself too. You got to know how to find the clients. So... Any suggestions? So that's my suggestion to you is you have the skill, which is amazing. You're already ahead of the game. You're already, you're already, yeah, you're very ahead of the game. If you understand how to use a mic, mic technique, you've got a great voice. Now you just need to market yourself. So you need to make a demo reel. That sounds really great. And start getting yourself on, put yourself out there on these websites. Sign up for two to three websites and they'll drive traffic to your profile. You start sending messages to some of them, send your demo reel, and at the beginning, offer a really great price, something that is irresistible. You can ask what their budget is, and you can even give them a deal better than whatever their budget is, or match their budget. Basically, seal the deal and get those first customers in the door. That way you get reviews, you get experience, and then you can grow from there. I have a radio voice and want to get started in voiceover work. Definitely do. I highly encourage you to do that. Just bought the course. Awesome. Congratulations. You're going to love it. There's some really high quality information in there. Some of my best tips and secrets. So enjoy it and DM me if you need help. And if anybody else would like to look at that, it's on voiceoverfreedom.com or the link in my bio. Uh, that would be great. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to get your course when I get paid. Definitely. Check it out. It's there when you're ready. Can I do it using only a smartphone? That is a question I find very interesting because most people would say no. And I would usually say no. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. But the technology has gotten so good. And I'll probably get hate for this from uh, people that are used to doing it the old way. But I don't care. I'm here to keep it real with you guys and give you my perspective. Um, there is a way you can connect a condenser mic to a smartphone and you can use a professional mic on your phone. A phone is essentially a small computer. So I think it might be possible. Now I can't confirm it because I've never tried it myself, but it could be possible. Now using just your phone? No, 
Do not record using your phone microphone. They're, phone mics are not that great. You, you can use it to practice, but to do customer work, I'm sorry, it's not gonna cut it. It's just not. Um, it is competitive and you have to stand out. So you're gonna need to invest in a mic. But as far as um, using that mic on your phone, I have seen it done. I have seen some, very few instances where I've seen it done. Maybe I'll try it out myself and uh, see if it's doable. But great question. I went to the Ohio Media School years ago. Very cool. That's awesome. So you already, people who already have some knowledge in like media, singing, microphone, music, um, anything like that, speaking, public speaking, or you just want to do this, like these are all great signs. Do you make a portfolio of your voice to get gigs? Exactly, exactly. You make a demo reel. So what you'll do is you'll record snippets of scripts and then you'll piece it together and you'll put some background music to it and then save that as a one to two minute demo and that is like your business card which you're gonna send out to different companies. They're gonna hear your voice and then if they like your voice, they will ask for a quote or they'll just keep, they'll keep the, the demo on file so don't be discouraged if you don't hear back. Sometimes they just keep it on file and they show up like months later and they um, ask, ask for you. It's happened to me where I, forgot about someone and they're like, oh yeah, you sent us your demo uh, months ago. We, uh, we, we, we need a voice for this project. And I totally forgot about them. <laughs> so that is the beauty of it. How do taxes work? Uh, so basically with these websites that you sign up for, they send you a W-2 at the end of the year and you're gonna use that W-2, take that to your tax specialist and they'll get you good to go. How do you get started? So that is how you get started. You um, train your voice, practice your voice, learn how to bring a script to life. That's the first thing is your voice, the talent, the most important part, you. And then you get the gear, the mic, and you make a booth, you make a demo reel, and you slap that puppy online. Um, and it's not as simple as I'm making it seem. You gotta, there's a lot of advice that I'm giving out that you really need to apply because you need that competitive edge uh, you need to stand out. Would Fiverr be a good place to go? Yes, I recommend it. It's a great place, but you got, again, you got to sound good. You got to know what you're doing. You got to know how to put together a good demo reel. You got to know how to record. All these things are important before you, you, you know, you make an account. So don't just go up and make an account. Let it sit there and say, hey, it's not working because that's not, that's not what it's about. You actually got to be good and uh, you can be good. So it's like a voice cadence. AI cannot emphasize nor enunciate. Exactly, exactly. AI has basically this one, just one voice in that person. It doesn't, it can't change the cadence. It can't make it raspy. It can't make it more nasally. It can't make it more slow or deep or it can't make it silly. It can't add pauses. It can't add emphasis. It can't, it can't do all these complex nuances that the human voice has. So don't worry, AI is not going to take over the world yet. Uh, how do you get started? What's your traveling setup look like? This is a good question. So when I went traveling, I basically, I just brought my Yeti USB microphone, which comes with its own mic stand, which is what I love about it. And I wrapped it up in clothes. Um, they have carrying cases for it too, but and I just use clothes to keep it secure and just my laptop and because i'm traveling i can't bring really much many things with me but i want to keep recording voiceover so i'll use my pillows i'll use all of my pillows in my booth in my in my room i'll use the blankets i'll even use the mattress there have been times where i got the mattress from my bed and i lifted it up just to create like a a wall behind me it's because sometimes the walls the regular walls are really reflective so I'll use whatever I can um, to make a booth. It's not too complex, but it is important. My friend moved to India and is a voiceover artist. He loves it. I love it too. It's, it's really fun. It's an amazing thing. 
uh, where do you start? Website, um, right here. Listen to the information. Um, check out voiceoverfreedom.com. And uh, feel free to send me a DM. But you start with your voice, train your voice, create a demo, and go from there. I thought one me didn't know what, uh, don't understand it. Grocery outlet, cool. I can't do different voices, but I have a southern accent that everyone loves. Perfect. If you have an accent, you have a, a unique voice that can appeal to a certain demographic. So a southern accent is going to connect really well with people in, in the south. Or um, I guess like the thing that comes to mind is like, have you seen like a, a commercial for barbecue ribs? They always got that southern, southern accent that says, come and get these barbecue style ribs now at a special low, low price, these delicious ribs. You know, that voice, it, ha it makes you feel like, wow, these ribs got to be good, right? Because I, something about the voice sells it. And that's the beauty of voiceover work is that different people connect with different audiences. I could say, I could, if I did the commercial, I said, come and get these baby back ribs. They're really delicious and really amazing. It could work, but something about that Southern accent, come get these baby back ribs. It just makes you think, wow, I want those ribs. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the South, <laughs> right? You understand now each, each voice connects with a different audience. So I'm really glad you brought that up. On the business side, did you get an LLC and the website domain? Is that the first step? No, I didn't. You you would need to do that if you were to do it solely for yourself. Um, you would need to do that, but I do it mostly from Fiverr. And then I did have an LLC a long time ago, but I, I just, I wasn't using it. So I just, I just canceled it. So um, for a website domain, yes, you will need to do that if you're doing that for yourself. So most people who are probably on this live or probably new, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, if you're new, I would say it's easier to just use um, an already existing voiceover website. That's how I started out, super simple. But if you're already recording and you, you've got experience, radio experience, and you wanna have your own website, by all means, go for that. You don't have to, but it is, it is gonna be a great way to find um, the best clients is have your own website because you can also charge your own prices and keep the full amount. Um, so uh, that's a benefit there. Hey, so they find you on, um, on the web. Once you make a profile, the website will send traffic to you. And this is why this is, this is why it's so important to have a good demo reel and to have, and to know what you're doing before you sign up on the website because the, the, the webs, the voiceover website will send traffic to you and that traffic will listen to your stuff and they'll either buy or they won't. If nobody's sending you messages, the website's going to say, okay, this, this gig isn't really performing well. I'm going to stop sending traffic to it. And then you just, you get less and less traffic and eventually you just, you don't hear from anybody. So you need to make sure that you start off with the right foot. You got to have a good demo reel, have a good presentation, have a good pricing, and good customer service so that you're basically telling the, the website algorithm, hey look, I'm getting good reviews, I'm getting sales, I'm making your website money, promote me more, send me more traffic. It makes sense, right? It's an algorithm. Fiverr is an algorithm. Um, it, it's gonna send traffic to uh, profiles that perform well. So keep that in mind. This is an algorithm, the, the websites are an algorithm. And that is how customers find you, by doing a good job, putting on a good demo reel, putting your best foot forward, and listening to the, to the advice I'm giving you here so that you do put that best foot forward. This is, I'm giving you the, I'm giving you the sauce because I've done this already. I've learned the, uh, I've learned how to do it. And there's a, there's a spot, there's a section on the website where you can look at your analytics so you can see exactly how much traffic you're getting so that's a good way to stay on top of your uh, traffic. Uh, let's see. Great questions, guys. Uh, keep them coming. 
Did you take classes? I did take some drama in high school and I did take some speech in college. Um, but besides that, I mostly learned on my own. Um, I, I've always done research online though. Uh, I wish I had taken some classes back then, but this was 2010. There wasn't as much information as there is now or people offering advice like there is now. Um, but yes, classes are would be helpful. So do recommend. At what point would you join SAG if you aren't already? Um, I think the only reason I would join them is if I were to get... I don't know. I don't know. Because the thing is, I like not having to drive to a studio. I like being able to just be home and record in my booth and be with my family and, and travel. Because if, if, if you... I was going to say, I would like to, if I were to do SAG, be part of SAG AFTRA, because I would want to record in a studio just to have more experiences in like a studio, like a big Pixar studio or something. But I would only want to do that just a few times. I don't want to do that forever. I know some people might think like, wait, isn't that your dream? And I think it would be cool. But again, if, if you have to go to a physical location, you're not going to be able to to go where you want to go and I, I want to I want to discover new places I don't want to have to be tied to a you know a specific place so really great question I'm a bilingual singer would that be an advantage definitely I get gigs all the time especially for cartoon projects where they ask me to sing so they'll ask me for like let's say uh, if I'm doing like a children's book or a children's video on YouTube or a cartoon I'll need to sing in the, the voice of the cartoon character and you can charge more for that, so it's definitely an advantage. Tips for introverts getting out there. I am i was an introvert. I'm still kind of an introvert. Um, so I think the biggest tip is force yourself to be in front of people. Do karaoke. Uh, maybe read in front of your family or sign up for anything where you have to give a speech or have to talk in front of people. Maybe like read storybooks to your little brother or little sister or read out loud if you have to and just Basically, get in front of people, get around people, get comfortable speaking out loud. That's my advice for introverts. What's your favorite website to sign up? Uh, Fiverr's my favorite. I use it a lot. It's uh, what part of the world are you? It's Sunday in Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I'm in uh, the Pacific Pacific Time. Cartoon voiceovers. Yes, cartoon voiceovers are very important. You can charge actually even more for those. And I'll tell you a secret. There are four types of cartoon voices that everybody can do. There is deep, there is smooth, there is gritty, and there is um, a falsetto. And basically everybody can do a deep voice like this. Hey, Froggy. Where are you going, Froggy? It's basically where you make your voice deeper. That's one. That's one cartoon voice. The next one is like a smooth voice, like, Oh yeah, let's go! Mamma mia! So, I'm pretty sure everybody can kind of do a smooth kind of voice. It's it's the closest to your normal voice. The third one is a gritty voice, where you're talking like a villain. I'm the villain. I'm the boss around here. You just make your voice gritty. Everybody, I'm pretty sure... Let me know if, if you can't do that voice, but most people can do a gritty voice or something close to it. And then the falsetto is where you talk like this. You make your voice really high pitched to sound younger. I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little bunny. I'm scared. Where should I go? And that's the falsetto voice. So those are the four basic types. And I go more into detail in, in one of my courses on voiceover freedom on my website. But those are the four main types that everybody can do and so there you go those are four voices and you just kind of from there you just um you add little nuances like accent or speed or uh, energy all these little all the each thing makes it a new cartoon for example if i talk like this i'm one character but if i change the speed now i talk like this and i'm a whole new character and if I add an accent, 
Now I talk like this, and I'm a whole new character. Notice how I started with the bass, which was deep, and then with that deep voice, I added, I changed the speed, and I changed the accent, and I made three new characters. So, just a little tip, just a little trick there is um, start with those four, and then you can like create new characters, tons of new characters from there. But, um, cool stuff. You can charge more for cartoon voices. Do you recommend recording with your waking up voice or do you always warm up? Always warm up. Don't use your waking up voice because uh, your voice is still wa is still groggy, it's deeper. For me, it's a lot deeper. And you want your voiceovers to sound consistent. Drink some water, have some breakfast, get warmed up. Do some vo vocal exercises if you can. Editing on just your phone would be hard. I agree, I agree. It's a lot better when you have a full computer and a mouse, but it could be possible if you really need to. But yes, I, I completely agree. It would be a lot harder to edit on your just your phone. People say they love my Southern accent, but I can't do different voices. Can I still get a job? Yeah, definitely. Like I, like I said, Southern accents apply, um, connect with Southern audiences like the summer southern demographic like the barbecue ribs example i gave when you got a southern accent saying come and get your ribs just like we make we make them the best here in the south it's gonna sound better than when i say it for example like get your ribs now they're they make them better in the south like yeah i could do it but the southern guy is gonna beat me because it's just it connects that's the audience they, they want um, that's a niche, so you might be limited, but there should be a market for it. I just got the course. Thank you. Awesome. Congratulations, and let me know if you have any questions. Do you do much editing other than cutting out outtakes and redoing correct takes? In the beginning, I, I made a lot more mistakes when I was recording. It's normal. You're learning. Um, nowadays, I still make mistakes. I'm human, but um, not, not too many. It's just I edit out maybe couple mistakes uh, maybe I just make it sound a little cleaner that's it it's pretty simple it doesn't take me too long the demo you sent to companies on card or electronically all electronically everything online there's no need for physical discs or physical mail this is in, in this day and age you can reach anybody online through email and electronic means this that's the beauty of uh, the day and age I love doing voiceovers how and where can I do it for money so that's awesome that you love doing it it's super fun I love doing it um, so you'll want to record a demo reel once you have your demo reel you'll want to sign up for a voiceover website like Fiverr or Upwork or um, people per hour or voice bunny or ACX and they will send you traffic Make sure when you sign up, you put your best foot forward and you have competitive pricing and you have great customer service. What kind of laptop is best? Most laptops nowadays are just fine for running Audacity. Audacity is a super simple to run pro program, so you don't have to have anything cutting edge. Um, if you want specs, something with at least four gigabytes of RAM. That's it, pretty simple. You don't need anything fancy. Mattresses on the walls is dedication for sure. I'm embarrassed. I admit that but it's true. I did do that and It worked and it was worth it. I was traveling. I was in Croatia. I was in Croatia traveling getting to know a new country. So yeah, yeah, it was worth it um, How can I get started so I'm just gonna move over here Just to change the scenery a little bit uh, how can I get started? So tuning into the lives, uh, practicing your voice, reading practice scripts. Uh, check out my channel on YouTube, Voice Over Freedom. Hello from the Bay Area. Hey guys, I used to live in the Bay. Uh, it's a pretty cool spot over there. How much you make? Uh, nowadays, average is three to five K a month. My best month was eight K. And I work at most an hour a day, so I could work 
a normal job, quote unquote, if I wanted to, but this is more than enough for me. It makes me happy. It's something I love to do. If you if you want to make more money, like I said, you can work uh, another job on top of it. But for me, that's more than I need. It's plenty. Uh, um, great questions, guys. Where do you get your gigs? So I get most of them from Fiverr. And I do have some people that work with me directly through email that I've um, come across through the years. I live in the north and the and love they love my southern voice. Boston accent here. Very cool. Have you always handled handed scripts or are you asked sometimes tasked to write them? Oh, really good question. So yes, I have actually. I will get some interesting interesting requests. Sometimes um, they won't have a script and they'll ask me to write one. And I have done it before, but it's, it's a little time consuming. So I don't normally offer it anymore. Uh, but I have done it. Yes, I have done it. And you can just quote whatever you want for it. And I have gotten requests to do videos too, to do video editing or edit the voice with the video. I've gotten all kinds of requests. Singing is a more common one. I've gotten requests to uh, sync the voice to the video, like lip, lip sync it. So I've gotten all kinds of requests. So you can write the script for someone else if they ask. You can offer that. There's some people who offer that as a service. And some people even offer to grammar check a script so you can charge for that these are all extras i don't like doing that because it's extra work and if the grammar is wrong i'll just check i'll just fix it for free but there are people who do that as a service would you like to make a portable mic booth you can make a good booth with suspending ceiling tile oh very cool definitely so fiverr will give you a w2 at the end of the year exactly Exactly. They do email you a W-2 that you can take to your tax specialist. What kind of laptop do you have or is best? So I have the Zenbook. It's called the Zenbook. I bought it in 2018, I want to say, 17. So it's a little bit older now, but super quiet book. Um, any, any laptop that's thin, doesn't make much noise, is going to be your best friend. So that's the main thing, is that it's thin, so it's easy to carry, and it doesn't make much noise. Where did you start? I literally started from my home. I was I was living with my parents, my family. I was, uh, I was going to college. I lived with my parents. I had my own room and everything, and I just, I didn't have a mic or anything. I just, I just saw the opportunity and, and did it. That's it. Like, think about that. I was just a normal guy going to college. I had a normal job. I didn't have any gear. I just decided I wanted to do it. And I did it. Because um, there's a big demand for voices. And you don't need a fancy studio. You just need a simple mic. And you need a good sounding booth. A good sounding room and you can do this from home you can make some money on the side like I was making it on the side one second I was making it on the side and then I grew it to become my full thing full-time thing and then I traveled the world which was one of my dreams and I got a question are you guys able to hear that background music because I have some music and I hope it's not distracting but let me know if the, the music in the back is distracting or not and thank you for the questions. I'll do my best to get to all of them. Da, 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 da. Ho, ho, ho! Come on down to Santa Sleigh Shop. We're selling sleighs. Ho, ho, ho! All 50% off. Come on down. Santa Sleigh Shop, located on I-205, next to McDonald's. Ho! Ho, ho! See, that's an example of one I would do. Except I wouldn't do a Santa voice, but... Can you hear that music in the back? Can you hear that Christmas music? I was just... I'm being silly. Alright, back, back to the questions. 
how can I start and apply? I have a great voiceover voice. Awesome. So you'll want to uh, get your mic, invest in your mic. You'll want to get the software, download a, or create a demo reel, and then slap that puppy up on the website and create a profile and you should be on your way. Let's skip the how and get to the catch qualifications. The qualifications are you have to sound good. You have to have a good voice. You have to learn how to know how to bring a script to life. That's super important. I would say it's the most important part is you, the talent, how you sound, how you interpret a script. Because think about it. If I've got state-of-the-art studio, state-of-the-art mic, and I read like this, I am not going to get hired because it's not, it's not, that's not, it's not good. But if you read like this, then someone will say, wow, I like how they sound. I want that voice for my commercial. So let me book you. Send me a quote right away. And that's how you do it. So that's basically what it comes down to is the talent. Talent is so important. That's the main qualification. And yes, of course, there are other things. Some websites do require specific audio qualifications, um, but that depends per website. Some websites will want a certain um, loudness and whatnot, but that's uh, that's more more complex, right? That, then we'll talk about that. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm a SAG actor. Want to do more voiceover? What site? For SAG actors, I would say probably Voices or Voices 123. That's probably a better website for a SAG actor. Uh, what site? Stop asking the same question. Yes, I do get that question all the time. A voice bunny, Fiverr. Yep. Fiverr Upwork. Voice Bunny, are these sites for work? Yes, they are. You're a ride gentleman. Your mother taught you wrong. I'm an older female. All right, guys, let's just get along. <clears throat> the gritty voice sounds like one of my coworkers. He sounds like a frog to me. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the whole idea between the uh, be, behind the cartoon voices. They're supposed to be funny. They're supposed to be. You're just supposed to put a smile on your face. That's how you know you're doing it right. How's the pay, bro? Pay is really well. Um, one project could... It, it varies a lot. But one project could be anything from 100 bucks to 1000 bucks, And the work could vary too. Sometimes I could read 100 words and I'll make 100 bucks for it. Or it could be 300 words or 400 words and they'll pay 1000 because it depends if it's a cartoon voice are they gonna be broadcasting this on TV is it a local radio ad um, is it just a personal project each one of these is um, you charge differently for it so each project is very different but that's the beauty of being a freelancer is you can charge what you want but, uh, let's keep going with made up voices, how hard do you find it to be able to keep a consistent voice over time? Oh, that's a very good question. I love questions like this. So basically, it is hard. It is well, not hard, but it's tricky because it's tricky because I'll get a customer who say they 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 want me to be a roach for their TV commercial. And then they want to do another commercial or another ad and they come back to me and they want me to do the same voice. But I might, this might have been a month ago or two months ago. And then I, I don't remember what exactly I sounded like. What did he sound like? So the thing is, I keep all of my files in a folder so that I can refer to them later. So if I do get that customer and he wants that exact same voice, I can open up the folder, find the file, I can listen to my voice and say, ah, okay, I remember exactly what he sounded like. And then I can do the same voice over and over again. So that's the secret to that. Just keep all of your uh, files. Never delete your files. Keep them all. Sometimes a customer will ask for it 
in the future. This is rare, but a customer might say, hey, look, I remember that voice I bought from you a couple, I don't know, a couple months ago. I lost it. Can you send it to me again? So there you go. Keep all your files. Thank you for this information, man. Definitely. My pleasure. I have Adobe Audition Cloud. Do you know what program to use within Adobe? Yes. Use um, Audition. It comes in your Adobe subscription. If, you, if any of you have an Adobe subscription, use Audition because it already comes included. You're already paying for it. So use that. And it's a great program. Just came to your page and are used to do I used to do voiceover animation and had an agent back in California. I did English dubbing for anime. Oh awesome. So send me a DM. I wanna I wanna learn about what your experience was like having an agent, because a lot of people are curious about um, agents. And so send me a DM. I would love to uh, chat with you. It's always nice to hear perspectives or feel feel free to write in the chat how did you like having an agent did they bring you how much work did they bring you and uh how much was the the cut that they that they got all right let's go back to the questions here we go how to make a demo yourself yes that's the way i teach it that's the way i prefer it um i do everything myself and you don't have to a lot of people, they'll go into a studio, they'll have someone else make it, but I believe that if you're going to be sending audio to, to people, you got to be able to recreate the audio that they listen to for the first time. So if they hear a demo, if they hear your demo, they're going to want that quality that they heard. So you got to be able to replicate it. That's, that's what I believe. I believe that they should get what they hear. Otherwise, it's like, you know how in TV commercials, the burgers for fast food, they're always huge and they look really perfect. But when you buy one, that's all smashed, greasy, little patty. It's like that. Like, you know, you want to make sure you get what you're advertising is what I'm saying. So make sure you can give them the quality that they listen to. I still have my demo on cassette or wow, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Well, if you want to join the live, feel free to uh, uh, join with me and we'll get you get on here. I'm definitely getting your course. Thank you for creating it and sharing your experience and knowledge. Awesome. Really happy to hear that. And send me a DM if you have any questions with it. And you will definitely enjoy the information in there. So can I just have a phone with a microphone? Technically, I haven't tested it myself, so I can't, I can't encourage that. But maybe, I mean, technically, I can. I've seen people use microphones. Um, I've looked it up. You can use like an actual condenser microphone and hook it up to your iPhone. You have to have a special adapter for that. It's not something that I recommend or encourage, but I'll, I get a lot of people asking me about it, so maybe I'll try it out and see if it, it's actually possible. Do you think voiceover actors may go out of business due to voices like voice AI? I don't think so. I mean, AI is not there yet. It's not there yet. It's still got a long ways to go. Audacity, good question. There are better programs, but Audacity is low cost. Yes, I agree with that. What should be on my reel? All right. So your demo reel is like your business card. You want to show off the different styles that you can do. So that style could be documentary, it could be radio, it could be commercial, it could be audiobook. Turn the page for the next chapter. So you want to showcase your voice and it needs to be short and concise because people don't spend a lot of time listening to stuff. One minute to two minute max. And that is a good demo. A classic book is Word of Mouth by Sue Blue. I'm glad I found you. I'm glad I found you too. You gotta do what you gotta do. FYI, there is a delay in you receiving the messages we are sending. I think I'm just, I'm getting so many questions that I'm a little behind, but I'll, I'll definitely do my best to catch up. I do voiceovers and narrating. That's awesome. 
what was your busiest day? And if, if you guys do voiceovers already, definitely send me a DM because I want to hear about your experience. I love connecting with other voiceover artists. I think it's pretty, pretty cool. What was your busiest day? Whew. I've had many where it was just, it was so busy that I, I couldn't get them all done. And I had some long projects, especially back when I was starting out, I charged a lot less than I do now. So I would get much more work, longer projects. And there was one, one time where I had a, I don't know, so many, I had an audio book for um, a, a children's book and I had to do the voices of all the characters. And my voice just gave out by the end of it. I, it was, it was hard. It was hard, but I was able to mitigate that by charging more. So that way I got less projects, but I made up for it with the higher price. And uh, that's basically, it's a smart business move. Over time, you charge more, so you make the same amount of money or more money, but the project, the workload goes down. And that's, that's kind of what you want. You don't want to be working all day, necessarily. I mean, unless you do. I just tapped in, new here, I'm interested. Super cool, welcome. How are you doing? Any union gigs like SAG? All non-union. This is all non-union, all freelance, all my own people. I'll get customers that just reach out to me personally through email and I'll just send them a quote. Simple as that. I've even had friends. I've had friends reach out to me. All I do is send them an invoice with PayPal. They pay it, I record it, and boom, out it goes. You don't got to be part of a union for that. So that's that's the beauty of it. People tell me I should be a voice actress, but I don't know how to start. You're starting right here. Just listen to the sauce, listen to the tips and tricks that I'm dropping here. Do you need an agent? You do not need an agent. You are your best agent. Does the websites cost to make a profile? Some of them do, yes. Uh, some of them you do have to pay a yearly subscription, but most of the ones I mentioned will take a cut of your order or your gig they'll take a cut like 20 percent which to me is totally worth it because they're bringing you customers that you wouldn't have had anyway so way worth it what is the initial investment uh the microphone laptop is the main thing um, because you can make a booth with things you already have around the house make sure your room is quiet carpeted floors help a lot that's the main stuff. And then over time, as you make more money, you can invest into professional things like sound panels to put on the wall and a better mic, things like that. What's the best microphone? I personally use the Blue Yeti Pro. That's the one that I use, but a condenser mic. Any condenser mic is gonna be a really great, uh, great mic for it. Thank you so much for your openness with us. Awesome, really happy to hear that. I've done Spanish voiceovers in my downtime, but I want to make more money. Do some English ones too. I think that's really incredible. Um, you could also um, offer, expand your uh, offer to cartoon voices. That way you get more work and more money. And you can also offer, I don't know, think about what else you can offer, voicemails. Um, Maybe acting like a video game. You can make like a video game reel. Because those are different industries that you can appeal to. Okay, yep. I can hear it, not distracting. Okay. We can hear it. If you lower it, we can hear you better. Is the music too loud? I hope it's not too loud. I'll move back over. Uh, music is nice. I just like the music because it kind of gives like a vibe. It gives a nice little vibe. Uh, where should I now? Let's move right here. Do you live in LA? I was born in LA. I'm not there now. But I am from LA. I was born there. Wow, you're good. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Can kids do voiceovers? Absolutely. I've seen a couple kids do voiceovers. And uh, there is a demand for those, especially in um, like cartoons where there's little kids. There's definitely 
a need for that. Sometimes I'll get I'll get asked a lot to do like a voice of a little kid, and I'm like, wow, this there's this is this is a big demand because the like videos on YouTube for kids there's a big demand for that. If you have a very very quiet room, do you need a sound booth? Well, it has to not only be quiet, but it has to be treated, which means that if you if you speak, you don't hear any echo at all, and you don't hear any reverberations at all. So that's the important thing, is that there's no reverberations in your voice. But a really good question. What's a good mic to start out with? Blue, look up blue mics. Voice Bunny is free, yes. What do you... Where do you get scripts to read for your demo tapes? I just looked them up online. Um, it's kind of a pain because you have to search for them. But um, if you check out my course on voiceoverfreedom.com, I include the scripts in there for you. It's a $27 course worth the investment if you ask me. Um, or I teach you how to record. I teach you how to find your own style with your voice, the mic, the booth, the setup. Um, and it has the scripts. So check that out. if if you would like. How do we get into SAG? Uh, you have to go to their website. I don't know much more be beyond that because I, I don't work for SAG. I've never gotten into SAG. I don't really have an interest for that. Um, so can't really help much there. But if you look up SAG AFTRA on Google, you can uh, find more information on, on that. This is a perfect job for me because I take care of my autistic son. Oh, very cool. Does anyone know how to get started? What's the best place for beginners to start? Fiverr is a good one for beginners. Definitely. I've tried Kovoco and I'm getting spammed. Ooh, yeah, some websites are, I would not recommend because you will get tired. You'll get, you feel like you're going in circles. And that's probably one of them. So... Uh, you do a voice reel, okay. Do you save your recording on a hard drive or iCloud space? Either one. I would personally save it to my computer hard drive. Agent cut is 25%. That's pretty, that sounds pretty standard. It's a little more than Fiverr. Fiverr's is 20%. So, uh, hey, so cool seeing you live. How did you do the banner at the top of your live? So cool. Uh, green screen. It's a green screen effect. And good to see a freelance big sis. What happens? You get offer and you get sick of your voice gets choppy. Oh, yeah. that's You have to communicate with your cu customers. Just let them know, hey, my voice is feeling a little strained or choppy. Uh, can you give me a couple more days? And most of the time, they'll be cool. They'll actually extend the timeline for you. Do you have a startup course for beginners? Definitely do. Voiceoverfreedom.com. Um, it's 27 bucks, and I walk through the mic setup, the booth setup, your voice, warming up your voice, your style, finding your style, um, how to record, all that, and I have practice scripts in there. 27 bucks, can't beat it. It's the price of a large pizza these days, so check it out. It's also in the link in my bio. Different people for years have told me to do voiceover or use or use my voice for messages. That's pretty awesome. And you know what's funny? Um, there are people who want voicemail messages. I, I got paid to do a voicemail the other day. Literally, like, just for, like, a doctor's office. Like, something simple. So people do want that. My daughter is 20 years. Her voice sounds like it. AFL. She'd be so good. Definitely. I could do an AI voice. Can I get a voice recording job? You probably could do a couple jobs with an AI voice. There's some. There's been a couple times where I've done like an AI style voice. So nothing wrong with that. How much is initial investment? The mic is the most important thing. Your laptop mic could be anywhere from fifty to a hundred, two hundred bucks. And then use things around your home to make a booth. If you want to just keep it cheap, but if you want to get the good stuff, sound panels are going to cost like $100 to $200. I've been told for many years because 
for many years, became a hospice nurse for 19 years. Very nice. But what do you want to do? How do I get into it? What's your quote? So my current quote, I'll tell you that in one second. I need some water. Water is a voiceover artist's best friend. Um, so currently I quote per word. So I'll quote uh, 35 for every 100 words as the base rate. And then I'll charge for the license. If they need a broadcast license, it's 40 bucks. For a commercial license, it's 40 bucks. And then I'll charge based on how soon they need it. If they need it the same day, I'll charge for express delivery. What if I have a soft voice? Perfect, there's people that want soft voices. There's people that want all kinds of voices. If you listen to the TV, you know, listen to the TV for a day, you're gonna hear all kinds of voices. They don't just have Morgan Freeman on 24 seven. You know, they're gonna want your voice. Someone wants your voice. That's all I'm trying to say. What mic should I buy? A co any condenser microphone is gonna do the trick. Um, try to spend at least a hundred bucks on it if you can. Um, but condenser microphone. I use the Blue Yeti Pro and it's been doing wonders for me. Super easy to use. That's what I love about it. Okay, you have motivated me, my friend. I love hearing that. That's the best thing. That's the best thing for me to hear. Yes, duty calls. Love the music. Okay, very cool. I hope it's not distracting. I kind of moved a little further away. Why you move out of LA? Um, I, I don't always live in LA. Sometimes I'm down there. Sometimes I'm in Oregon. Right now I'm in Oregon. I just, I like moving around. My daughter is a voice actress. She played Barbie in the new, newest movie. Really? Send me a, send me a DM please. I would love to hear about her experience. Like, that's awesome. I love connecting with people in the industry. Uh, is HyperX a good microphone? HyperX, I don't know that one. If it's a condenser mic, then yes. Is it voice money or voice bunny? It's voice bunny, voice bunny. Just joined. Uh, voice bunny, let me know if they're still accepting talent because somebody yesterday said that they were closed for voice talent, which could be true. Just joined. I'd like to do what the title says. Awesome. Very cool. Respect, relating the spectrum, voice bunny is free, which sites to avoid and which to use. Um, there's a there's a couple that I would say you would have to avoid, but they're not the popular ones, thankfully. Um, they're not coming to mind right now. But yeah, they're not coming to mind. Sorry. <clears throat> be honest this isn't for everybody there are people who will just have no voice talent uh, I mean it isn't for everybody some people you you do have to it is an art it is an art and you do have to be dedicated so it's kind of like um, I don't know how to answer that because there's so many there's so like I've seen all kinds of people do voiceovers, all kinds. Every single voice you can think of, I've seen their voice. I've heard, you've heard their voice. You've heard the, you've heard the Southern accent. You've heard, you've heard the British accent. Like you've heard all the accents in media and apps and you've even heard AI voices. Get off at the next stop. Thank you for writing. Like you've heard all the voices. So I just think it's just, it's a matter of dedication and um, yeah, you have to be dedicated to it. But yeah, in, in that regard, it's it's just like dancing or cooking. It's not there's it's not for everybody. You gotta you do have to put in work into this. It's not an overnight thing. It's not a get rich quick thing. You have to really work at it. You have to follow the advice that I'm giving you here, and uh, stick with it. But if you're dedicated and you stick with it, you can make it work. And it's it's not it's not hard. I work with the Samsung Q9U. Oh, very nice. I've seen that mic. Good microphone. 
<laughs> do another voice, please. Uh, which voice should I do? This is Tom, and Tom can't wait to get to work today. And that's where we come in. We're TaxiCo. We're better than Uber. Call now. We take the course at our own pace? Yes. Because I need more than a few weeks. Yes, that's correct. It's at your own pace. Anytime you want. Because I know we have busy lives, so. Can you do this as a side hustle? Yep. I started as a side hustle. It's the best side hustle in the world because you can do this from anywhere in the world with just your mic. So yes, best side hustle ever. Is the room you are in have sound panels? No, there's no sound pa panels here. This is a living room I'm in. And I'm just here temporarily. I don't, this is my house. I'm just here for a couple weeks. Um, but I do have, um, whenever I visit my family, I have, a, I have a booth there that I've made. You can see it on my TikTok. I'll put, I'll repost it so you guys can see it. But um, pretty cool stuff.